Combat. Let's jump in, huh? So, refresher where we left off. Um, you guys were fighting the Dark Mantles with the orcs that you planned on hiring to build your base and then murder. And then Ian got a little bit uh, overzealous on the murder part. And now the orcs are turning on you. Yo. Sounds like a wonderful plan to me. <laughs> Before they start building. All right. I forget. Had the orc taken his turn yet? I don't believe so. No, I think he just turned and yelled at us. Yeah, okay. Uh, well, I think he had already run up to Ian, but I don't remember if he had made oh, yeah, any attack. Oh, yeah, he'd used the movement, but not the attack. All right. Yeah. So... He can only make one uh, attack at a time. So that is. That is a 12 to hit you, Ian. AC 12. Alright, you take uh, 15 <laughs> piercing damage. Wow. wow. I don't think he can take much more of that. No. No, I am. I am in 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 a lot of pain and <laughs> quite not happy. I am at two. Oh jeez. Jeez. So um, at the end of his turn, uh, the bigger orcs are going to attack this thing until it dies. See how many attacks it takes. Uh, one. Okay, so. Oh, fuck you. Okay. So, one swing on, uh, the Dark Mantle. And this orc turns, runs its full movement. Well, not its full movement, but there. This one's going to move there. There. And wait a minute, one was a, I think this one's supposed to be dead. Because two of them were supposed to be dead. Was yeah. there one here? I think, because I think that would have been it. I think I, think I moved it when I moved the darkness around. We killed all the dark mantles, I thought. No, there was one dark mantle still, or is that what they're called? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, there's one of those still alive. So, um, uh... It's gonna be one attack on the Drake. That's... A 23. Alright. Um, 15 slashing damage. He rolled really good on uh, damage. That's the one. <laughs> uh, I'm detecting a problem here. Yeah. Now, two attacks on. Well, one on. Um, yeah. Yeah, one on Altair and one on Captain Anna. So, Altair, that's an eight. Um, eight to hit? Yeah. How would it. Yeah, it miss. Captain Anna. Right here. Yeah, but it, it the way that the corner is, it can uh, attack diagonally instead of right beside it. Wait, but it's the one that's in the corner, right? Yeah. Is attacking me. Then which one is attacking? You said one's attacking Altair, right? Oh, they There's have multi attack, and they don't have to oh, do the okay. attack on the same one. Okay. All right. No, the only reason that. there was only one attack on uh, the Drake is because that particular one had yeah. used up its other attack to kill the Dark Mantle. Okay. That one is for uh, Captain Anna. At disadvantage? Yes. Alright. <clears throat> Which is good because it got a 21. And that is a 4. Sweet. Thank you. <laughs> so neither hit and then two attacks on clicky AC is 15 alright 
Uh, 25. And 11. One hits. These guys are rolling pretty good today. Uh, 11 slashing damage. Fuck. And then it's Clangy's turn. to move here I'm going to use that's on uh, uh JK Tellingard yes JK okay you get 11 hit points back oh and uh oh you get 17 hit points back all right, that tops me off. Nice. Bit of a roller coaster, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> um, I'm down. No, I'm not. I'm up. Wait a minute. <laughs> On the one that attacked him? Yes. Okay. Uh, yeah, 19 definitely hits. By fire damage. Oh, All right. And Clicky would say... No, 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 no hitting captain. Not allowed. <laughs> All right. Uh, captain Anna, your turn. Alrighty. Um. So, <laughs> ju just for reference, my automaton dragon, who just saved you, also started talking. <laughs> Hmm. Interesting function you've installed in this one. I figured, you know, might be nice to have someone else to talk to. So Captain Anna's turn is spent with six seconds of dialogue? <laughs> <laughs> um, no. Um, while saying this, I'm gonna swing my scimitar at, uh... You're just uh, casually like, ah, so how was your day at work? <laughs> yes. I'll... I'll you know, completely normal in the life of a pirate. So, um, I'm gonna swing my scimitar at the one that's, uh, right in front of Altair. Um, you do use that. It's just gonna be a. Actually, let's see. Um, do, 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 do. Okay, yo. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm going to take my scimitar and swing at it, so it's going to do that. Uh, yeah, that did and, and, yep, uh, so then that's going to also be a sneak attack for two damage, so that's going to be a total of nine damage. Um, so, so hang on, we're fighting the orcs now, automatically? Oh wait, shit! I th yeah, the plan was kind of to kill their leader, wasn't it? Um, well, and then no, and then make so... the rest of them submit. But I, th I mean, think that was the plan. Did they finish our base? Uh, oh, no, they didn't even start construction yet. Yeah, but um, the, the dark mantles attacked us. What are these guys just turning on us? Why are no, we? No, no, so no, no. I, I I killed several of them. Yeah, yeah you cast that, shatter, and there was. Uh, right. There was collateral damage, and the orc leader didn't take kindly to that. Right. Um, okay, fair enough. So, um, yeah, I kind of forgot the plan there for a second, which I think the plan uh, now is to kill the orc leader and make the rest of them submit. Um, but um, my actions have been done, and um, they cannot be undone. So... Uh, yes, the orc in front of uh, Altair takes uh, nine points of damage. Um, okay. And uh, then... Uh, let's see. You still got your bonus action and movement. Yep. Um... Well, let's see. With my bonus action um I 
I guess technically I could pull out a dagger and attempt to use two weapon fighting. Um, the you know, see. Do you have two weapon fighting? Well, that's something that anyone can do as long as they're capable of wielding two light weapons at a time. Oh, okay. You just get like you just get shit for bonuses. Um, because you don't you don't get to add your ability it's score modifier to the damage of the second attack unless you have the fighting style that allows you to do that. Okay, you also don't get to add your proficiency bonus to the attack roll, if I'm remembering correctly. Nope, you do get to do that. Um, or am I thinking of the yeah. arm strike bonus action roll? I was pretty sure that you couldn't add your proficiency bonus. Let's see, two... Weapon fighting 5e. So normally the rules for two weapon fighting say if you're wielding two light weapons, um, one in each hand, then you can use your off-handed weapon to make a bonus attack you don't add your ability modifier in the attack or the two in the bonus attack to the attack um, line, I believe. so yeah uh yeah it would be my what's your attack ability score modifier my ability score modifier for dex would be three so, so it would be minus three to hit. Attack and damage. Um, the only time you actually consider the ability score modifier is if you have a negative, then that would subtract from it. Um, so. Um, so you can do that. You can roll another attack at minus three, or you can disengage your own way. I actually don't have to disengage because of uh, fancy footwork, which is a swashbuckler special. Oh. Um, so if I make a melee attack against a creature, uh, that creature can't make opportunity attacks against me for the rest of the turn, which is basically like one of the greatest parts about the mobile feat, except I don't have to take the mobile feat to get it because Ooh. it's built into my class. Okay, yeah, um, very nice. And it doesn't say I have to land the attack either, it just says I have to make a melee attack against a creature. Um, so, that would allow me to, um, well, let's see, I could, uh, I could slip away and, uh, come up to this guy, and then I could use my bonus action to try and stab him in the back and I think that's what I'm going to do. I don't get another sneak attack because I already used that. Yeah, it's only one um, per turn. But, so I get to make, uh, so I will make a dagger attack. And um, that's going to be a miss, obviously, because that would be a uh, five to hit and would have been three damage, but it's going to be zero on that one. And, um, Well, actually, and then what I can do, actually, because how much movement did I use? I Not used... Much. Oh, uh, 20 feet. 20 feet of movement. So what I am capable of doing is pulling back to there. Or, like, so you here. So you there. slashed out, and then spun around, ran away, and then stabbed with your left hand, but you missed wide, and then... Sp yeah twirled around again to step off to the side pretty pretty much and uh what that does is it makes it so that um the chief that i just moved next to um won't be able to attack me unless he um accepts two opportunity attacks from uh both of my comrade comrades that are still sit, uh, standing next to him so so yeah that's strategy good. all right all right um See and yeah, how it plays out. i'll tell you here Speaking of strategy, I'm going to cast Sleep at second level. Okay. Uh, so that would be 7d8. Yep. Um, 
I gotta use. I gotta pull off the advanced dice roller. I think you can click on the pink dice on the thing. Um, twenty-eight. Twenty-eight. Starting starting with the lowest HP one and going up from there. I'm high. I'm highly doubtful that the lowest HP one even has less than twenty-eight. Actually, this one does. So, uh, the one next to Klingy, um, sort of wobbles around and goes nappy nap. Is there a good sleep? Uh, yeah. yeah, I think there is one. I'm gonna mark it with the, uh, prone. Okay. He's doing nice. Okay. And, uh, I can cast a cantrip as well. Uh, okay. That, Only if it's a, a bonus to... action cantrip. Fair enough. Um, in that case, never mind. So, um, yeah, the only bonus action I have is two weapon fighting. So, uh, okay. that is my turn. Alright, so, JK. Uh, yeah, all three of these are going to be at the head dude. This uh, Scorching Ray only does one attack, doesn't it? Three. Just three. It's just like magic missile. <clears throat> three rays yep. of fire, okay. All right, so yeah, that's eight, sixteen, twenty-four. Ooh, ooh, that's a big hit. Cut me! I will burn you. <laughs> <laughs> oh wait, no, that's to hit, isn't it? No, spell save DC thirteen. Okay, so I gotta roll a dexterity save. Why does it? No, it, if you read the spell description, it actually does say make a ranged spell attack for, for each ray. ray. Okay, yeah. So it, doesn't, it doesn't have a save. I don't know why it says the save in that it, box. Oh. It says the save for every spell. Just okay, because. oh yeah, so that's one miss. Yeah, so you would roll that three times if there's three rays. Yeah. Same thing then? Yep. yep. Yeah, just roll the same thing another two times. Well, both of those hit. Yeah. And then just roll the damage for both of those. All right. Fourteen. Fourteen, still pretty good. Okay. Uh, so is that all you're doing on your turn? Uh, Yep. Okay. Uh, Drax, you are the worst cheese in, or you are the cheese in the worst sandwich. <laughs> uh, I'm actually down, so I'm thinking that's there. Oh, are you? Wait, when did you go down? It says that you're at 13 hit points. No, uh, so that's not updated right now. Uh, for some reason, it didn't automatically update. But I got hit last time, remember? When we it doesn't update between Beyond and Roll Twenty. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The uh. Okay. Took like points of damage. So yeah, roll a death save. Fourteen. Fourteen's a pass. So that is my turn. All right. The direct make that dodge action. Well, you can't. You're still unconscious. You need to make two oh, moves. When, what... when I'm unconscious, you automatically take the dodge action. If she's talking about um, her Drake. Oh, okay. If not given a command, then it automatically takes the dodge action hear... on its turn. Yeah, I didn't yep. hear Drake. I just heard dodge action. Yep. Okay. Um, all right, his turn. He's pretty mad at... JK, honestly. Um. <laughs> uh, he's not going to do that. 
He's gonna do. He's just gonna stab at you again with the spear. Uh, that is a nine to hit. AC thirteen. So. Yep. Yeah, nope. All right. He just pokes at you and spends their turn just sort of dancing back and forth with the spear. Uh. Now it's the uh, orc's turns. There's going to be two attacks on the drake at disadvantage. It's an eight. And a 16. 16 hits, right? Me? No, uh, the drake. No. Oh, drake. I... So, uh, that's six damage, or slashing damage on the drake. Sixteen hits. Because that says it gets armor class. Yeah, sixteen hits. So we used to, or how much damage? Uh, six. It rolled really low on the, uh, damage that time. Now, who else is on the block? Um... I guess one's gonna have to attack Altair. Oh no. Well. No. No, he's not worried about Altair as much. Uh. He's going to throw a javelin at Captain Anna. That is a 24. (laughs) Um, I think that just, just barely hits. Okay, um, you take six piercing damage. Alrighty. And then the last two attacks are gonna be on Clingy. Uh, nine and ten, so no. And it's your turn. You just dodged two great axe attacks. Mm-hmm. Wow. And I think they Captain almost, Anna they called out that you a new axe hole. this one is the... I heard that. That this one is the main target. Well then... I'm going to take a shot. Fuck me. Right. You roll more nat ones on a pistol than anyone I've ever seen. Alright, DC 10 to fix it, so you're good. Alright, that's my turn. Alright, well, Cap. Yeah, I'm gonna risk it. Oh, attack of opportunity? Yeah. That would potentially be two. Yeah. Oh, is it one of the No. No, the one in front of. Um, well, that's Clinky? a natural it's one. Clinky. Uh, from the Orog. And... Well, you're... The AC is yeah. 17. Yeah. That is an 18 from the, uh, Orc leader. Alright. 11 piercing damage. Alright, Captain Anna. Alrighty. I'm gonna slash and poke. It's gonna be a 17. Is that hit? Yep. Alright. Uh, so that's 5 damage. Gonna oh, add also, a sneak yeah, attack. Sneak attack. 9 damage. I'm gonna stab him with a dagger. 11 does not hit. That's. Yep. Yep, and, and it would be um, even lower than that. Yep. And... Oh, let's see. I'll move there. Okay. And end my turn. 
All right, I'll tell you. All right. The decision to either try another sleep and hope that one of them's low enough, or maybe they're not, and I do damage instead. Well, I'm not allowed to tell you their hit points, so you'll have to just think on what you know. How low did I roll before? You rolled it. Yeah. I I rolled average, so... Uh, A good chance that I could roll good or bad or average. Uh, Um... I I'm just gonna go for it. Fuck it. We'll do the 78. Alright. So asleep at second level? Yes. 34. I rolled better than before. That's exactly what I needed. Alright. Starting with this one. He falls asleep. Aha! And not quite enough to cover this one. That's okay. I incapacitated another one, so yeah. good enough for me. Uh, that's my turn. Alright, uh, JK. I'm gonna cast Magic Missile. <laughs> <laughs> that's your favorite spell, isn't it? Because it's just like guaranteed damage. Yes, it is. Uh, and the, uh, I get four darts. Casting at level two. Oh, okay. Is that going to the big guy? So that would be twenty-four or sixteen. Oh. I'm yeah, sorry. 16. sixteen. Yes. But is that that's at the leader? Yes. Oh, yes. 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 Let's kill this guy. Okay, he is looking rough. Like. One of the missiles pierce through his back and veer off into the side of the uh, rock. Uh, Drax, give me a uh, death save. Eight's a fail. Alright, uh, Orc Leader's turn. He is going... I mean, he's a spellcaster, but most of his spells are support spells. Um, He's gonna cast Spiritual Weapon and no no he's just gonna try to stab you with the spear again because it's basically the same thing that's a 21 to hit uh uh missed him uh ooh 16 piercing damage ah I is at one yeesh god damn it you're a dick (laughs) (laughs) No, everybody should have potions. Doesn't everybody? Have Uh, what? Potions. Potions. Oh, yeah. We have potions. (laughs) I think I remember you saying... I think I remember you saying we looted some from the first uh, Dwarven merchant ship that we... Yeah. Um, yeah, you did. In the, uh, and, and then you then bought some more. It. Yeah, we it's never. Very important, people, to remember your <laughs> inventory. Yes, we never distributed the potions. Yeah, so. I don't have any. Yeah, yeah I was just gonna say. This guy's gonna Fine. come up and try oh. to just knock you out. Oh my god. Okay, I was just doing a little bit of reading. Apparently, if I'm yeah. two attacks. Break, take any Damn it! Action. What, Nazi? Uh, apparently if I am, you know, incapacitated, the Drake is the action of choice. Okay. So the DM decides? Oh. Well, I'm assuming since it's seeing people go down, it's going to want to attack and try to help. 
Probably. Am I unconscious at one? Uh, no. Okay. But you would be if either of these attacks landed. However, I rolled an 8 and a 10. That's... Yay! <laughs> um, so, asleep, asleep. Okay, uh, this guy's just now piecing it together that Altair's the one putting everybody to sleep. So he's gonna make two attacks on him. He's just now piecing it together? He's not... They're not smart, okay? <laughs> they take hammer and go bang bang on some nails. Uh, but that's uh two attacks that are over twenty. I'm gonna One of those die. Okay. <laughs> I'm in danger. <laughs> so uh, that's a twelve and a twenty-one. The twelve is enough to kill me. No no Wait, no no no. 20... Twelve to hit and twenty-one to hit. Both of those hit. Both? A 12? 12 oh, still hits you! <laughs> I'm a sorcerer! Wait, man, what's your AC? 12! Oh. What's your. You know what? Actually, that makes sense because he doesn't wear armor and he's probably got a dex modifier of 2. Okay, so, so the first hit. The first hit deals 16 slashing damage and knocks you out. Yep. <laughs> the uh, second one hits you and deals an automatic uh, death saving fail. Wow. So you are unconscious, and you failed one death save without rolling. And that's all the... Swinks! All of them that can ah. still move. Oh. Alright, Clingy, you have three people that need your help. Yes, I Everyone's know. dying. <laughs> I can also... Okay. And Nancy, you're still unconscious. Hey, uh... Yeah. Wait, 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 I can still attack, can I not? Yeah. On your turn, yeah. Yeah, you can. Yeah, okay. I'm You're just low on health. Alright. This is to Nancy. Spare the dying. That's an action. Yes, I know. It's also a cantrip. So. She's no longer... She's stable. Uh -huh. Doesn't have yes. to make death saves. No. Although technically, doesn't that mean if they don't make death saves anymore because they're stable, doesn't that mean they also can't recover health? Because no, doesn't they... succeeding three times restore you to one health and you like wake back up? Yeah, the rules are a little bit weird on it, but uh, if somebody heals you, you can record recover health, but you're just unconscious until the battle ends and somebody <clears throat> restores your hit points. Yep. Alright, you can't do that because you already used your action to spare the dying. Uh, oh, you're muted. Oh, you're good. Alright, then I will have... Actually, um, Max, you're, you muted your mic. Yeah, uh, um, Max... There's no echo. Max is supposed to come through my mic because yeah. that mic is plugged into the mixer that runs through my computer. It's complicated. Yeah, well, gotcha. you can hear me. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. That, so that's what matters. Okay. We're doing like what we do. Mm -hmm. Anyway. Uh, Clangy will move here. And... Okay, that's on who? The Boss leader? Man. Uh, alright. Four fire damage. You give him a pretty good burn. He's still up, but barely. Um, yeah, that's all I can do right now. All right. Um, okay, uh, Captain Anna. Alrighty. Alrighty, alrighty. Let's see if we can put an end to this big uh, shebang. Uh, Let's put an end to this tomfucker. Our... Yes. And I clicked on some star. Okay, there we go. Um, 17 hits. Alright. Let's add in a sneak attack. That's going to be 10 damage. Yeah, the sneak attack alone is enough to kill him. Oh, okay. Well then. I slashed my scimitar across that fuck's back. Just like, you know, just... Yeah, you, you sever, like, two of his... Uh, 
uh, vertebrae in his neck. Not like cutting his head off, but just like slashing through to the spinal cord, dropping him immediately. Yep, and then uh, then I kind of just like level my scimitar and like do a quick sweep at the other uh, orcs that are still standing, and I say, "You guys want some more?" <laughs> All right. And uh, then that's gonna um. You know what? To put a to put a little bit more emphasis on that, since with two weapon fighting, I can still make a bonus attack with a dagger. Um, granted, I've missed every single bonus attack I've tried to make because hooray for no ability score modifier. Um, I'm gonna try to throw my we dagger. Do need, we we do need people to build things. Yes, my intent is not to kill. My bonus action is very weak if it hits at all. Um, my intent is just to, you know, drive the drive point, the point home. home a little bit. Literally? Yes, uh, literally. <laughs> <laughs> so, I'm going to throw my dagger at the one who just downed Altair. Um, okay. And we'll see, uh, we'll see how that goes. And, of course, it misses. Um, Anyways, uh, moving on. <laughs> Next no, person. Listen, I don't even need that dagger. <laughs> see, that's, that's the point. I'm, see, I'm going to drop that weapon and drop. So you guys drop yours. All right. Fair trade, right? I'll tell you your death saving throw. We're not in combat. I'm kidding. Uh... We're still in combat, at least until the orcs turn. And is a pass, right? Uh, ten is a pass. It's bare minimum. Yep. Aha! All right, J.K. Uh, what's the state of this guy here? This guy? He has yeah. not received any hits. Uh, I'm gonna reach out and touch somebody. Yeah. <laughs> Holy. Yeah. Yeah. Well. Yeah. When you touch someone, you touch them. Your touch is electrifying. <laughs> you go ahead and roll that uh, critical hit. Wouldn't it spell be more damage. shocking? I think it sends a current through their entire, you know, just all over. Yeah. You you tase him. <laughs> they feel it deep in their bones. Uh, so, I guess I shouldn't describe this with an inside joke, but I'm going to anyway. Ian, do you remember that video that, uh, Brian Paoni would post in the writing group of himself getting tased? Yes. That's what happens to this guy. Nice. Could you describe that for more context? So he's standing there between, uh, JK and Clangy, no, Clicky, and... The electric current goes through his body. He goes, fuck, and falls forward on his face. <laughs> All right. Uh, Drax doesn't have to make death saves. Um, okay, the orcs are going to look around. They just saw their boss get killed. The one that they looked up to and respected. Uh, two of them are dead. Two of them are unconscious, so the other two look at each other at the field and just drop their weapons. Uh -huh. So, uh, I guess you're gonna build that build that base then, right? That's some good boys. Now you're gonna build our house. <laughs> you're gonna get some more. Oh, <laughs> uh, the one that got tased looks at uh, Captain Anna and says. We can join your crew, then. Sounds acceptable. And you've cut it down to uh, maximum crew size. Beautiful. Hey. Would you look at that? Six crew plus four uh, orcs. Might I, might I recommend installing the helm for the base, starting construction of the base, and resting for the love of God. 
That would be okay. a good it's, idea. It's not yeah. Like that very much. I would oh, also do to not be dead. spare the dying I mean... on Altair. And then potions. Yeah, I could uh, use um, I could use more too. Unless we're going to take a long rest, and then I'll just do cure wounds. Um. Oh, I think we'd probably definitely want to try and get in a long rest. Um, All right, then I'll just do cure wounds on Altair and Drake. Okay. I guess I'll have to drink potions once they become available. Well, if you still have health and we take a long rest, then you get all of your health back, so you wouldn't really need to drink potions. Yeah, um, you wouldn't. You, uh, you recover your health all the way to full, and you recover half of your total hit dice. Very good. Yep. Okay, so long rest. <coughs> I think I'm gonna turn Groovy down a little bit. It's pretty loud. One rest has been taken. Indeed. Uh, Would it be a good time to take a brief breather? Possibly. You mean intermission? Yeah, you mean IRL? IRL. Yes. Okay. Yeah, sure. We can take it. Quick. Required hot pockets. I require. Yes. <laughs> I require sustenance of some sort. There we go. Um, so, you have forced the orcs to submit. Uh, two of them are awake to accept or to surrender. Uh, the other two will have to come to the realization when they wake up. Uh, so, what do you do? Well, we, we basically slip off the day or something. Well, before we actually you know take that rest um i'd say it, we might want to like i don't know at the very least put all of the dead bodies into a pile um with the intention of maybe like i don't know either burying or burning all of them at some point i am leaving because i don't I think we really want a bunch of rotting corpses right near uh, where we're going to be constructing our base. I don't think we want to burn them. It seems a little crazy. Um, Simple solution to that. We put them just beyond the atmosphere if there's a place where that exists. And then we, they don't have to rot, we don't have to smell them, and we don't have to use up our oxygen burning them. Alright, so... Uh... Would somebody like to explore the asteroid and find a location where there is no atmosphere? I rolled a 23 yeah. investigation for looting. Okay. Um, well, each of the orcs are wearing uh, plate mail armor. They have uh, a great axe and a javelin each. Okay, hold on, hold on. Um, so there's two that are dead. Uh, I don't know... If you want to loot that off of those bodies, considering there are four of their crewmates alive to nice. take issue with that. Well, so I don't think we have anyone in the party who can utilize plate armor in the first place, because it's heavy armor. Um, the yes, only know, person but here... But they could be backup armor for those four, or we could sell it. We say they're spacefaring, so they would they would more than likely want to keep it anyway. Yeah, I mean just in just in case though. Oh, nice cat in the dice tower. Um, <laughs> but just in case those orcs have uh, you know particular views about what to do with their own dead 
I would say we should leave that decision up to them, whether or not they feel like looting their own comrades, or if they want to give them, like, I don't know, a Viking funeral and burn them in their armor or something like that, or whatever they, they do. So are you asking them? Their captain in front of them? Yeah, are you, are you asking them? Um... Yes, um... Yes. Okay, so... I think I would garner a little bit of respect instead of just trying to, like, hold an iron fist over them and, like, ruling them with fear. Um, you know, I think showing them a common courtesy might be, like, you know... Yeah. A little bit of goodwill. Like, we're not complete savages. Well... Those two... Uh... The armor is just armor. It... I... It'd be nice to have a backup. Um... The axes are uh, personal and should go with them. However, uh, who was it that killed? That made the kill? It was Captain Anna. Yeah. So uh, they would say you um, you have the right to everything um, that this one, the former captain, uh, had. And what do he have? I fucking closed out of his character sheet. Probably a bunch of stuff I can't use. Uh, okay, so you said two plate armor. Yeah. Does he two have plate armor. armor they're in. Okay, so he has um, a spear, um, a shield, a uh, ring mail. And a holy symbol. Okay. I have no use for a holy symbol because I'm a pirate who needs religion. Um, uh, Ringmail, I believe, is medium armor, so I cannot wear that. Um, Javelin is a strength-based weapon, so that's going to be a no on that. So pretty much all of his stuff is up for dibs. Or up for grabs, or whatever. Um, well, I put it all into the uh, treasury. Yep. yep. Um, Max, what sort of armor do you have? Uh, hold on. Do you have scale mail? Yeah, uh, he wears medium armor. Yeah, well, that's he's the only one in the party that... Well, actually, other than maybe a ranger that can actually wear medium armor. Yeah, I could have medium armor. Oh, what do you have, Nancy? I have leather right now. Okay. Um, does Ringmail impose disadvantage on stealth? I don't think it does. I don't think medium armor imposes disadvantage on stealth. It just has a uh, maximum dexterity cap. There are actually two medium armors that impose disadvantage on stealth. Um, half plate and... Oh, is half plate I want to say, I want to say scale mail. Nope, half plate is the highest tier uh, medium armor. Um, Actually, I have a chain shirt. Chain shirt? Okay. Um, I think that's pretty low. Uh, um, yeah, I'll let you guys look up the difference if you want to decide. I'm just telling you what they had listed and what things that they had that they could use. Yep. Uh, let's see... Kitty. Mm -hmm. She rolled an 11. <clears throat> an 11 for what? I don't know. Being a cat. Willow was rolling the oh. D30 here. <laughs> um, so you have a chain shirt, which is 13 AC, um, plus 2 dex, and then you're wielding a shield, right? So that's 13 plus 2 plus 2. That's how you so you're at 17. Yep. Um, so ring mail is 14 AC and oh no, uh, ring mail imposes disadvantage. So if you care about your ability to stealth, then I would say stick with the chain shirt. If stealth means nothing to you, 
then the ring mail will provide you with um one extra ac so um, um just the dm suggestion it sounds like the tankiest one should have the ring mail and give their chain shirt to the ranger all um right. i'm good with that does the chain yeah, shirt uh, uh no chain shirt does not impose disadvantage um but that depends so, on if your dexterity would give you a higher AC or not. Yep. Uh, Nancy, what's your dexterity? My dexterity? Uh, 16. 16? Okay. Yeah. Plus 4. Uh, modifier of 4. And you're wearing leather, which would put you at 15 uh, total. So with a chain shirt, you'd get 13 plus a max of 2, which would also put you at 15. So there is no point in switching to There's no um, a chain shirt. No real difference. Um, the only thing that would make a difference is if you got the medium armor master feat, which allows you to add... Um, it allows you to add a maximum of 3 as opposed to 2, and actually makes it so that uh, medium armor... Uh, does not impose disadvantage on stealth. Um, it's a very good feat if you're looking to maximize um, AC with medium armor. That does good. All right, well, um, you guys can hang on to that. So um, the remaining orcs also inform you that the traditional rite of burial for orcs has been uh, to ship them off to see with their uh, personalized weapons that they've crafted themselves. Um, but since becoming a space-fearing uh, people, they typically jettison them. Uh, Spock burial from uh, Star Wars. Yeah, the original okay. Star, War- Star Trek. <laughs> okay, you just pissed off a lot of people. Spock, Spock from Star Wars. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, I, I binged all of the Mandalorian season two. So how was it? It's a very good show, right? Yes. It is so good. I'm a doctor, not a Wookiee. Please tell me you saw the last episode. We have. I haven't seen. Any we haven't seen two. season two yet. We actually need to start watching. My mind exploded. Okay, so I'm it, so excited. So the for the proper three. way. To honor their uh, their culture would be to ship the dead bodies out into space. All right. So their axes are personal or whatever. So we'd like what, place their axes on their chest, cross their arms over their axes, and then just whoosh. yeah, pretty much. Yeah, space Viking funeral. All right. That's Sounds basically good. what orcs are is in, in <laughs> yeah. the setting is space Vikings. Alrighty. We will um put them on the ship for now then until we uh take off again and then we can zip them out into the cold black darkness um once we're on our way. Alright. And all of those uh monster corpses, I don't know, we can just like Bury them, maybe? I don't know. Just this of them, too. <laughs> we, we need to store them for, in some place first. For however long until we make voyage again. So, I, 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 Ian had a thought on that, I believe, right? Oh, yeah, the whole uh, look for a place with no atmosphere and then dump bodies there so that they won't rot. If I only brought cats to the party, because then we could just literally catapult them into space. I don't well, know if they have... That's an interesting thought. Um, Do you have catapult, Ian? No. Okay. I, I picked it up in my other campaign. It's a fa- fantastic okay. spell. So who is uh, exploring the asteroid for a place with no atmosphere? I will. I can as well. Okay. I can also explore. Um, survival check, I guess. Oh. 
Didn't we determine that I don't breathe? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, it would be better if JK did it. Yeah, that's what I'm yep. thinking. Yeah, because, uh... Because Klingy just walks around the perimeter of the atmosphere generated by your ship. I think I'm gonna do that. You rolled an 8. I don't know if it's an 8 or a 20, it's like on the edge. Uh, that's like an 8. Well, if it is, then it's a total of a 20. Did you see, Maddie? I can't make it out, it's way too small. No. Uh, I can... Unseen servant. Oh, yeah, hey, I saw that. Yeah, I'm just gonna do that. And have it drag the bodies off until it finds a place with no oxygen. Okay. Oh, that's cocked as fuck. That, that is very cocked. Reroll. Yeah. Reroll. That's what I was like, I don't know what that would be considered. Is that the two? So. It's a little out of focus, you gotta bring it back it up a little bit. I mean, I just, I, I've got the, uh, I've got the Discord, uh, call not on my screen, and I'm watching it through the, uh, the OBS recording of it <laughs> on my TV, so it's really hard for me to make out anything. That was a two. Okay, yeah, no, you're following Clangy around the perimeter of your ship. Uh... So the Unseen Servant, how far away does it get from you before it disappears? Uh, oh, it's only 15 feet. Um, okay, well, I guess I'll walk with it. Task. More than 60 feet away from you, the spell ends. Okay. Yeah, I'll, I'll, walk, I'll walk along with it and have it do the dragging bit. Okay, so you're walking in a random direction with... Your unseen servant who is dragging two or four dead. Uh, can, can you make a strength roll for it? It has a strength uh, of two. So ro just roll a d20 and we'll add two to it. Alright, it can grab like one. I mean, that's a start. <laughs> Alright, you're off walking. What's everybody else doing? Well. You two are circling the ship. You make your way back around and say, Wow, this is a small asteroid and it all has atmosphere. <laughs> um, I will be overseeing the construction of the base. Okay. Yep. So you're going to have them build. Uh, you're installing the spelljammer helm, the miner helm, on the asteroid. Yes. Okay. Cool. Um, I will go with the party who is uh, going to bury the orcs because I can message Captain Anna if needed. If need the orcs aren't being buried, Ben. The orcs are being preserved on the ship until we can send them off into space. What we're trying to find is a location to dump the monster corpses. Right. That. So I'll go with them. And I can message Captain Anna or whoever else is staying uh, if they did. With the message cantrip? Yes. You want to look at the range of that? I think it's a mile. That's not very far. So, uh, never mind. Oh, by the way, I uh, did calculations in between last session and this session, and I think an appropriate size for this uh, asteroid is about 12 square miles. Okay. Or cubic, I guess, but, you know. Is three dimensional space. Um, okay, that's a wholly different situation. I will help with the construction. 
You're saying it's 12 cubic miles? Uh, well, it, it, it's basically a sphere with like a 12 mile diameter. Okay. So. All right, that's, yeah, that'll work. That gives it about 64-ish miles circumference. The curvature shouldn't be too unbearable. Assuming it's semi-spherical. Yeah. <clears throat> yep. Actually, instead of helping with the construction, I'm going to make some clothing for myself. Okay. With the leather. So. Uh, uh, I'll tell you here, what were you doing again? Were you following I mean, um, JK Tellingard? Yeah. Okay. Uh, so, Captain Anna is overseeing the construction. Uh, it takes, like, they get, like, constructing a town, this is a thing that takes more than just one day. I mean, building a house uh, takes at least a few weeks with a well, well-trained crew. So, they're, uh, they start digging the trenches for the foundation of, like, you know, a good starting home so that, uh, they could build a little bit around it. I will take care of the plumbing. Okay. Cool. Uh, eventually, you see, uh... JK, Tellingard, uh, Altair, and the uh, one corpse being drugged behind by something invisible make their way all the way around the asteroid and back to you. Uh, I'll be dragging that corpse. <laughs> Average walking speed about four miles an hour plus dragging that thing. Asteroid has a circumference of about 70 miles. I was I was gone for almost twenty hours. Okay, so Altair, would you have followed him that entire way or turned back when you got tired? Um, you know, I think I would trudge on just because I'm gonna take the level of exhaustion or whatever. Yeah, J.K. doesn't have to because he doesn't have to sleep, but you are a human. Yeah. So, <laughs> after 20 hours, you make your way around the asteroid and back to home base. Never finding we have a spot. Full atmosphere. Yeah, never finding a spot without an atmosphere. That is, that's, you know, at, at least we've learned something. Hey, you look kind of tired. <laughs> yeah, and it was all for such a good cause. I'm glad it was so worth it. Yeah, we should probably do something with these monsters, though. Yeah. You guys are at the base of a cave where you started building. I mean, that might be useful, though. And we don't want to go in there with robbing monsters. Maybe we just space them with the orcs. That was my idea. Then, I, believe, I believe the captain had suggested such. If I, if Why I don't correctly. we harvest them? them meat oh, you just you just you you tickle your little fancy i'm gonna go over here <laughs> all right you if you want to harvest them roll a survival check please talk to buy no um you you stab into one of them to try to peel the flesh from it and you hit a a, a squishy and the area around you erupts into darkness and you can't see. And then it it, oh. it slowly fades. Oh. Wow. <laughs> you've you've been inked. <laughs> I have an idea. Let's collect the ink. 
Well, it's not actually ink. It's magical darkness. I think that's that's their version of ink, but they're magical creatures. Right, so, but is it like liquid? I mean, no, no, no. It's like the, it's the spell darkness. I see. That they just like they have. Their, they must have a membrane that like is innately capable of casting it, right? Sure. Yeah, yeah, that, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. The knife hit. Their... Can I attempt yep. to help Lainey and try to? Harvest meat from another one? Uh, sure. Roll survival. Through the rigor mortis, they just cast magic. No, no, Ben. They have an organ that allows them to cast darkness. A 19? Yep. Instead of okay. an organ that, like, shoots, it creates right. and shoots. You, so um, you show Klingy mm-hmm. how it's done, and you, you take and slit the skin away from the, uh, the muscle underneath. And peel off all the meat, leaving a leathery cloak uh, that has one charge and can cast the darkness spell. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Can I? Uh, do we still have the spear from the orc captain? Uh, yeah. Okay, so. Um... It, I, I don't know, during a brief lull in the construction or whatever, you know, they don't need 100% supervision 24-7. So I walk over and I pick up the spear. Then I walk over to one of the umbrella monsters and I stab it with the spear. And then I put it above my head and I twirl it. And I ask if anyone wants to come stand under my umbrella. Boo. Are you saying that because your character's name sounds like Rihanna? Maybe. Room. Job completed. To make everyone cringe. Objective achieved. Yes. Okay. And it's not been replaced by a cat. <laughs> That's fair. That is. Uh, that was my fair. goal all along. Look at how amused she is. So, um, with a 19, I'll have you, that's not enough to get the skin off of all four of them. Well, three of them that are remaining. Should I roll again? Yeah. If you roll above a 20, that'll cover the rest of them all together. Um, Otherwise, you do it at advantage if I'm helping? Yeah, yeah. So what's that roll? Um, that one was a 12 plus 4. This one's a 16 plus 4. So that's 20 total. So the 20 total would be enough to get three more cloaks of darkness. Alright. I'll put into the treasury three cloaks of darkness. They can each cast it once? Mm-hmm. Alright. And that's a uh, uh, 30... 30-foot radius, or...? I think it's a 20-foot radius. I'll look it up, but I'm pretty sure it's a 20-foot radius. A 15-foot radius sphere, so 30-foot uh, diameter. Yep. Okay. How many health potions did we get? I don't fucking remember. Does anybody remember? I mean, I think that was before we started recording. The first episode, yeah, but how many you bought? I don't know, but we could go back and watch. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, I bought zero. Because I'm broke. I also bought a zero. I think I, as well, did not buy any. I'm pretty sure it was the this last session that you guys did it. You went to Marcus Lavelle's... Uh, yeah, I don't think anyone individually bought them. I think we used some of our, like, crew fund that we've been putting all of our spoils into and, like, purchased, like, some amount of them, like, for, like, the whole crew. All right, how many... Uh, how much do you have in... Oh, wait, no, you didn't, because 
mm-hmm. what you didn't spend on the uh, materials for the orcs to build, you spent on a major helm. Yep. That is correct. Yeah. Okay. So I'll say that you guys have 10 total. Okay. Just it's- flat out from the uh, dwarven merchant ship that you robbed. Okay. If everybody checks the ship treasury, everything is there. Did we get the money back? Uh, no. They spent it on the materials that they're now building your base with. <laughs> yep. Crafty orcs. <laughs> well, well they, they wouldn't, wouldn't have gotten, gotten the materials otherwise. So, <laughs> I mean, it's money well spent. <laughs> the materials are you make our buildings out of your dead brethren, damn it. <laughs> yeah, we, you're supposed to magic the materials out of thin air. Like, how incompetent could you be? I mean, to spend money on the materials. Mind. It may not be useful rock, but any rock you stack can be a wall. <laughs> Yeah, although I'm not sure if an asteroid would contain anything we could use as a binding agent, so it would be pretty, uh, you know, um... Flimsy? Look, if somebody gets a cannon or siege weapon close enough to attack it, well, I think we're pretty much boned anyway. Yeah. Yeah. We have spaceships and we're still working with siege cannons. Okay, so... I think it's just, you know, effective weapon. And our ship has a ballista on it. It's Captain. literally just a giant crossbow. Yeah, uh, yes, Clangy. I'm thinking maybe we should go check out the cave. Maybe? If everyone's feeling rested, yeah. I think some cave exploration would be um, good so that, uh, you know, we don't get surprised by any more um, penis bats <laughs> or whatever they are. Okay. So everybody's at a full rest. They're fighter penis. <laughs> Those German fans out there. Instead of fighter mouse. <laughs> I hate you both. So, you know, wait, I, I just realized that a flying fucking German is their flight or fuck, uh, their flight or fake. Uh, okay, okay. You're going into the. Who's all going into the the cave? Me. Me. Same. Me too. Uh, yeah. All right. <laughs> Everybody. Okay. Good. Um. All question. right. Is it dark? It is very dark. Who has dark vision, or who doesn't have dark vision? I have the light cantrip. Right. I, don't I don't think Warforged have uh, dark vision either, but if Ben can make light, then uh, no, then do I not? That's... Uh, Warforged, Warforged don't innately have dark vision, actually. <laughs> the elves were like, "Let's build these machines," but just in case Asimov was wrong. Well, it, it was in my mythology. It was the uh, gnomes that built them, but still. Oh yeah, right, fair. The gnomes have dark vision because they live like underground and stuff, right? Yeah. So why wouldn't they build machines with dark vision? Mm-hmm. I mean, if you're going to build a machine anyway, why not build it with dark vision, whether you've got it or not? <laughs> yeah, that's true. Defend right? me, except when it's dark. <laughs> well, they built you for space combat. Uh, not a whole lot of sources of light out there. That is true. That is true. I mean, wanna, there are, are but lasers. Are. You know what? You get, you guys have made a decent case. I'm gonna give J.K. dark vision just because you oh. have reasoned it into existence. Woohoo! Are you in some of dark vision mode? That's not so. Hold on, hold on. I have this like button it. on my temple. You'll never guess what it does. <laughs> uh, Ben, is your phone close to your mic? Oh yeah, sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I let's talk to you all so well. Let's not do that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, all right, so. 
Clang is always going. Everybody, up make me a uh, perception check. Um, and Altair is casting light cantrip, right? Yes. Woohoo! Okay, okay. Wait, okay. Oh, what? <laughs> what? I clicked light. What the heck? Okay. Uh, Alright, Captain. No. Uh, so, this is an expansive cave. Um, Clingy, you're a little distracted. Uh, with, like, the way your new clothes fit, you're trying to get them adjusted. The, the ones that you just made. Uh, so, you don't notice anything. With a 16? Clingy? Oh, I'm, a 16. I, I was looking at your survival role. I'm sorry. Yeah, you're fine. You, uh... Okay, everybody notices that this cave is covered in moss with running water. Uh, water! Captain Anna... Notices that the ground underneath you is uh, moving. Ah, uh, shit, guys. We got another one of those creepy fucks. Oh, good. I think, probably. Yep. I don't know. Something, to, something weird is afoot. Or underfoot, rather. So, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. When you say the ground is moving, in what way? There seems to be two piles of uh, soil. It's basically soil. Sort of uh, just... Wandering around, okay. That's 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 not a good sign. No. Maybe it's Daglitz. I don't think it's Daglitz. I'm going to cautiously go up to one and just go. Okay. Uh, is is Clicky you. coming with you? Yes. All right. As you uh, step up and bat the uh, ground, a giant insectoid creature emerges. That's not Sorry. a Diglett. That's not a Diglett. Uh, hang on. Could still be a Pokemon. Oh yeah, that looks just like a Pokemon. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. Uh, so everybody needs to roll initiative now. Okay. I'm sorry. It's okay. Oh, we had to explode the cave at some point. Oh, boy. Oh, mama. I rolled good. I rolled great. I rolled mildly copacetic. <laughs> nice. All right. Uh, let's adjust that to descending. All right, uh, Captain Anna, you watch as Clangy kicks or pats a dirt mound, and this giant uh, chitin-covered monster with large shovel-like hands emerges. It gets all Starship Troopers real quick. Yep. <laughs> Alrighty. Um. Hmm. What to do? Do I go after the one that Clangy is next to? Go after the one with Clangy. I, I mean, I didn't say that. Yeah. Yeah. That's probably not a bad idea. Alrighty. Okay. So I move twenty feet there. And I give him uh, a slash. And a miss. Yep. You just and... sort of bunk him on the top of the head with the flat of your blade. 
<laughs> Alright, uh, JK. I'm gonna shatter this guy. Alright, uh, constitution save. Are you using that giant TV screen as your monitor? Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah, him. He is too. <laughs> that is cool. So, walking and doing that doesn't work. So, uh. Constitution. I just played a Rolling Stones hit. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah. Uh. 14 thunder damage from, uh. From Mick Jagger. Yeah. Okay. Uh, you hit. Oh, that hurts him pretty bad. The chitin starts to shake loose. <laughs> um. Yes. So, I need all three of you, uh, the Drake, Drax, and J.K. Tellingard, to roll a uh, dexterity saving throw. Eleven. Do you have a modifier? Oh, so you got a five? Yes. Okay, what about the uh, Drake? It would probably be just a flat dex roll. I don't know if he has saving throws. Oh, he does have a saving throws. Uh, so. so, 17. 17? Alright, uh... So the Drake and uh, J.K. Tellingard take s six uh, acid damage, and Nancy Drax takes twelve. Okay. Ray, Ray, I've been slimed. <laughs> <laughs> Just out of it being pissed off at the. Uh, Shattering damage. This one is actually going to turn and start running. Ooh. It gets... Uh, Three opportunity, opportunity attacks. attacks. Yep. Yeah. So, pistol for me. Well, it has to be a melee attack for an opportunity attack. Oh. Alright. Well then, claw. That's a no. Uh, the 16 hits. The 3 doesn't. Hold on. Uh, I don't think a 10 hits. Uh, 10 does not. No. Alright. It takes a whopping 5 damage. And it uh it screams out uh <coughs> a, a loud insectoid screech. Yeah, that does not sound good. I shouldn't have tried that. <laughs> Valiant <laughs> attempt. And then uh from the shadows emerge. I need to. A bunch of insectoid humanoids. What? Who, uh... Can we load, please? Thank you. Uh... Let's see here. All 
All right, well, they're gonna each walk to the edge of the water. Oh, this guy can make it. Here, okay. Uh, now let's see what the range is. Okay. Uh. Drax, you hear a voice inside your head that says, Stand down. Stand down, if it wasn't clear. I'll let the rest of the party know what I heard. Okay, it is your turn. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cast my Hunter's Mark on this guy. Which does that. Yeah. Are you going to attack it? Uh, yes, I will also go up and attack it. So you did just hear a voice tell you to stand down. Well, I guess at first I will ask the rest of the party what they think. Uh. Well. I. There are quite a few of them. Um. But we then could again, parlay. hmm, what could parlay? Uh, I think uh, I could put this quite quite simply. Do you think they'll leave us alone in our base if we? Uh... Well, see, here's the thing: whether or not they're willing to leave us alone, this cave potentially has resources we could find valuable. There's moss growing here, which means we could potentially use it as a place to grow other plants and it has a uh, steady supply of what would appear to be fresh running water so i say we parlay also breathable air and yes oh the moss yes the moss does mean that the air in there is they would be making oxygen okay well all hell the water means there's oxygen <laughs> yes yes we could parlay and negotiate with them to be able to use the cave. We could. We could, we could, we could. Okay, but parlay as in to make a deal with them or gamble? Are we communicating directly with them? Can they understand us? Uh, you can't tell. The rest of them are all kind of... But, uh, the we one... haven't tried. Hang on. I just, just want to say for the record, I am not made of meat. <laughs> um, can I cast a message to them? Oh, Warforged are partially made of wood, right? What if these guys are more closely related to, like, termites? Then what the hell are they doing on an asteroid? <laughs> um. That's a very good question. So, yeah, uh, you could cast a message. Okay. Because I assume that's what they did with Nancy. Uh, I'm like, guys, I can try to communicate with them. Uh, I'll let them know uh, we want to make a deal. So I, I kind of like... I, I mean, I don't need to because it goes into a voice that they can understand in their consciousness. But I, I'm just like... <laughs> like... Casting the cantrip. Uh, will you post the description of it? Please. Please. Oh, because did they use message to, to Nancy? Because if they did, then I should be able to use it back. But that's not how it works. Eight, they might just have an eight telepathy. A telepathy. If it's telepathy, then that's different. But I'm saying if that's what they used, then I should be able to use it. Yeah, you have to speak. Oh, well, show the, show the, yeah, message. Um, I get the number, like I was just assuming. If it's a telepathy, then no. I guess. If, that's, if it's a different spell. Well, you wouldn't there. know. I wouldn't know. I'm just saying in general. If we're gonna rule it one way, you know? Yeah, uh... Well, if they don't speak common and they were able to transmit a message that Nancy could understand, then it's not with the message mm -hmm. cantrip. Yeah. Isn't the whole point of common that everyone speaks it? Uh, not insects living on an asteroid. <laughs> 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 I think we're going more with the Orson Scott card in, in you know, space 
the telepathy thing. It reminds me of the episode of Rick and Morty with the Mantis people. Do what? The, the, the Mantis people and Rick and Morty. The, they, make, oh. they make Cronenbergs. Oh, yeah, but... Um, um, so you send a message to them, uh, and you get in response back. Well, what did you say in the message? Oh, uh, I w- want to strike a deal with them. We, w- we want to make a deal with you. You get back. All right, I'm going to move uh, it on to Captain Anna's turn, and when it gets back I, to their turn, we'll see what happens. I didn't hear anything out of that. All I heard was weird click clacks. That was the All point. Right. So, what Anna is going to do, just in case they don't speak who man or English. Um, um, but yet, that, that would they, be solar uh, common. Yep. So, um, gonna take her scimitar, give it a quick flourish, and then kind of like, I don't know, stick it back in its like scabbard or whatever. On show her that head. you're and, armed um, but not attacking? Hmm? To show that you're armed but not attacking? Yes. So I'm gonna sheath the scimitar and then kind of just hold up her hands in kind of like a placating gesture and then maybe like, I don't know, one of these. I don't know. Is that like a that hand gesture for like peace or something? I don't know. Like, two, I don't know. Something, something, some sort of hand gestures to convey like the idea of, well, I don't know, this kind of like two hands like shaking, like, I don't know. Okay. I, I, I think I get what you're going for. All right. Yeah, just some sort of hand gestures to convey that we would like to, you know, feel out some sort of compromise. Oh, unfortunately, before your or their turn, we get JK, who is infamous for uh, fucking this kind of shit up. You, um, DM, huh? you realize that you skipped me and Nancy. Well, you started talking, I assume that was your turn, and Nancy did her turn to tell you guys what they said. Oh. Was I wrong? Well, okay. Alright, so, JK. Uh, I'm gonna wait and see what the big bugs do. Alright. Old man. Okay, uh, so... Young kegs do nothing. These guys all start to approach. And once they all cross over the water, and it's not very deep, uh, now all of you will be able to hear at least one of them, and they say, What brings you to our home? Yeah, you know, we saw this big rock, and we thought, this looks like a good place to build a shack. Um, so, you know, we're uh, we're gonna, you know, we're gonna be camping out there for uh, for a while. And when we uh, thought we might, you know, go on a little adventure inside this cave here, but uh, yeah, we will here we are to the archdruid. All of, all of you here, we will bring you to the Archdruid. Uh, is there any way you could bring the Archdruid to us? We will bring you in peace. That is our word. Uh, that's, uh, that's one one piece, right? Yes, all of us in, in one piece each. Yeah, and, and you understand it more as ideas than words. You understand it as, like, non-hostility. Okay. Yes. It's the we're being let in by natives. Alrighty. And we definitely won't betray them. Alright, crew, stand down. Let's see where this goes. Alright. We got it. Uh, I'm going to clear out the turn order now. So, they take you to their uh, village. 
and it's deep. Yeah, I know. It's deep within the asteroid. Uh, it seems that most of this asteroid is actually hollow. Um, and they lead you through the middle of town to uh, what looks... So their, their homes all look like mounds of mud, like ant hills made up in or out of the uh, rock of the asteroid. But in the so middle... Solons. Huh? So they're Solons. Solons? Solons, giant ants. Yeah, uh... I don't know what that's referencing. It's just a type of creature. Okay. Yeah. They're not that, but I did uh, sort of take some liberties with what they are. <clears throat> they are Thrycreen. Ah. Um, okay. But they lead you to the middle here, and that looks like about half of a very large human-made uh, exploration ship. Hmm. Hmm. What's that over there? That is the. I'd like to just wait a minute. I'd like to see if I know anything about that. Okay. So would I. Yeah. Anybody who wants to can roll a history check. Altair can do it with advantage. Oh really? Okay. Uh, I already had a plus three. But yeah, I'm gonna need it. Um, we'll roll it again. <laughs> Plus five, still only here. Come on! I'll tell you, it's not feeling it today, apparently. Okay, uh. How was up to I'll tell you, he's not paying attention. He's more interested, he's more fascinated by these insect creatures. Three. Ten. I probably know nothing. Uh, <laughs> oh, then maybe I know more than everyone else. Um. Yeah, okay, so. Captain Anna was the only one. Who paid attention to the uh, the news cycle and knows that this is definitely one of the uh, twelve ships that the humans sent out beyond the asteroid belt. <laughs> the rest of you just know it looks like a humanoid ship. Uh, Altair's not very, uh, apparently. He's not... Alright, so, um, <laughs> Captain Anna kind of looks at Altair and says, Hmm, I had been aware that your, uh, puny race had, uh, endeavored to search the solar system. Oh, is that what that is? Oh, looks right, like, uh, yeah. Looks like some of their voyages were not successful. Yeah, so that they have, uh, it's the Primes. The, basically, they're an exploration... Guild and uh, yeah, uh, I was I was trying to join that. It didn't work out so well. So here I am. It's for the better. Because <laughs> we're here and uh, they're there. You know there what? You, when you put it in that perspective, I, I kind of agree. So uh, yeah, I was like, point this out, but uh, there's a human ship here and uh, a distinct lack of humans. The uh, yeah. yeah. the, the uh group of Thrycreen leading you point to the structure and s call it the Hall of the Elements and say the Archdruid uh, waits within and she is uh, responsible for the entire colony. What if the Archdruid is a female human that was on the ship that crashed here? Oh yeah, yeah. I managed to convince the tribe that like she was god because she had magic or something like that or technology technology yeah one or the other well, that would be anything any technology that is sufficiently under, misunderstood or not understood is, is magic yes yeah. the, the yes quote. so all everyone... right let us go see the arch druid any technology that's sufficiently advanced is uh analogous indistinguishable from magic there we yeah. go that's the full quote thank you mm-hmm Okay, yeah. uh, wait until they get a load of me. Um, <laughs> all right, you're. Uh, you all go in to this building. There, uh, there's a lot of open space. Um, Not on the map. I'm no. This is just from my reference. Okay. 
Uh, there's there are like little beds set up along each side. It uh, there's one skinny room, or there's two very long empty rooms, and then one that's like a perfect square. And inside of it, there are four items. One uh, sends water flowing out the door and into uh, the ground. Another one has uh, clouds constantly poofing out of it. Uh, There's one that is always burning. And then another one just sort of lets dust fall off of it constantly. And standing in the middle of it, or sitting actually, meditating in the middle of it, is an older human woman. Of course. That was a that was a bow in case he couldn't. Yeah, I got tell. Oh, the ears like. Oh ho ho! Well met, fellow explorer. Seems like you've made quite a, you know, living for yourself. She opens her eyes and looks at you. Uh, kind of sighs and say, "When they told me that people like me had come, I hoped it was part of my crew." Uh, Who are you? Sorry to disappoint, but we have not seen another soul than the ones that we uh, came here with. Well, who are you, and how did you get here? Um. Well. We're uh, no gooders. And we are no. And hey, sh- 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 forgive my, forgive my compatriot. Um, we I, are. Wait, wait. I go up behind uh, Altair, and I just over his mouth. <laughs> um, <laughs> me and my fellows. <laughs> me and my fellows are a um, group of. Uh, Explorers. People who we are explorers who also dabble in the um sciences rearrangement of funds molecules. I mean, uh, funds. So this we convert people. <laughs> this is the uh, face that you're looking at. We convert people from living to dead. <laughs> it's a sort of alchemy, you could say. <laughs> One of <laughs> She um oh. she rolls her eyes. Um do you want to try to make a deception check uh with disadvantage? With disadvantage? Sure. I will I will take a stab at that. Oh, I will too. I am very good at deception. Oh gosh, darn it. Man, I'm so good. You have a 7? Oh, yeah. Gosh. Dude, I have expertise in it. <laughs> What's up? Do you want me to try with my negative three? I think that's a bad idea, Nancy. <laughs> <laughs> Whilst they're doing that, she she looks at you and kind of rolls her eyes. All right, all right, fine. You got us. You got us. We're pirates. We the steal magic. From people. You knew the whole time. We knew the whole time. The, we um, try not to kill people most of the time. So, JK, uh, the four items producing various elements are, in fact, magical. Um, right. She doesn't. She's not carrying or wearing anything that's innately magical. What can, can I, I detect, detect the school? Uh, I guess this would be conjuration. Clangy is okay. just slowly moving up, sniffing at her. You know, oh, like cats oh. cautiously do. You don't see any aura around her, though? Um... Not... No. She doesn't have any items that are magical. It does Well, it, it'd be uh, any visible creature or object in the area that bears magic. Oh, I mean, well, she is a very powerful magic user. Okay. But... Can I tell what her school is? Um, I mean, she practices a lot of different... Is she a monk of the four elements? 
Lucas, no, that would be a little bit too on the nose. Yeah. A little metagaming, Lucas. <laughs> so, hey, she's an old woman uh, who's regarded as, I don't know, and, and she's surrounded by four pedestals that represent each of the four elements. So, I don't know. Um, I think she's terraforming the, the inside of the asteroid. That would, or, should... or, or since it's half of a crashed ship, they could have a um, helm on the half of the ship that's like inside the asteroid, and that could be generating an atmosphere that's allowing so like the guys containment. Out... Hey guys, I have a better question. Are you uh, guys theorizing out of the game, or are you like having this yes, weird discussion uh, in person? No, or... I think no. I think this is a break from the in-game discussion. This is yeah, merely you know. Fine. All right. I mean, I, I guess I'll let you guys head cannon for a little bit. Uh... <laughs> you could just play the game to figure it out. I mean, yeah, yes. Uh, yeah. Actually, <laughs> it seems like seems like. <laughs> okay. So, anyways, uh, back to the conversation. Um, I'll tell you what's going to happen. So, ask. Uh, so no, she she no. very very clearly knows that you're bullshitting her, and she doesn't seem to care. Yep. Um, so, anyways, um, yes, you you've got us. You've called us out. Well, you didn't really say anything, but. But, but you know, I can, can see, see by the look in your eyes, eyes you're not convinced. convinced. So we are we are pirates, um, but not the well, bad kind of pirates. You know, we're, we're like, like, you know, we like, like living, and money helps, helps us do that. So, so we, we try, try not to kill, kill people. She says, unless unless, unless they, they like their money too much. I'd like to interrupt this fool. Sorry, it's calling you that, but, but I'm not one of you guys. I'm not, I mean, I'm just here. I'm not a pirate, though. I, I, like, us around. He's I don't give a shit if you're pirates, she says. Um, Meanwhile, I don't have anything for you to steal. If you tried, I would crush you where you stand. It's just a fact. Um, Meanwhile, cool. Clay so what, is still why is still on rock? Okay, Clay. she says, Kitty, what are you doing? Um, this fellow is a very curious one. Don't mind him. If you don't mind my interjecting, uh, I couldn't help but notice you don't have much use for the surface of this thing. Uh, maybe an arrangement could be worked out. Yes, yes, you see, that that brings us to how we got here. Um, we were looking for a, uh, a place to call home, and this rock looked very nice, and we thought there was no one else on it, and uh, we have found that that is not the case, but... Speaking of... Chance you wouldn't mind having some neighbors? Or speaking of, I mean, it, hey, maybe I, we don't know who your, what your situation is. Forgive me to assume, but like, I mean, we got half a spaceship over there, and you sitting here with all these insects sounds like you're away from home. I mean, could we possibly help you out if we help get you home? Maybe we could make this our home somehow. I mean, it seems weird, right? You want to get out, we want to get in. That's kind of weird. Who said I wanted uh, to get out? I'm very I mean, happy here. Sure. Well, anyway, uh, maybe maybe you could use some more fleshy, like, squishy dip company. You know, must get lonely with all of these hard exoskeleton things. If, uh, I'm sorry, if I don't know. Here is done making way. himself look like or making yourself look like a pork tenderloin. Um, hey, hey, uh, you know. Okay, everybody. Is... I, if you guys don't stop talking over yourselves, I'm going to make you roll initiative for the fucking conversation. <laughs> Uh. All right, Ben, go for it. Okay, uh, so like I don't believe you that you don't want to be here. Listen, we're, I'm a human. You're a human. Uh, roll I'll insight. Be... Roll insight. All right. I'm bad at that. Not bad. Uh, she appears to be straight up with you. She seems that uh. She seems like she's just old and tired and doesn't give a shit at this point. Look, look, I get it, you know? You got here, you're just complacent, but, I mean, don't you want to go see the rest of your race? I mean, I know I do. I've just been out here. We're both explorers. I mean, I didn't quite get into Primes. You're clearly a very advanced member, but, uh... Why do you think you know, I wanted to join the research crew? What do you mean? You you flew an explorer ship here. It was a one-way trip out of the solar system. I knew I was never coming back. You think you, that I would have done that if I had anyone back home to miss? Why did you leave? Because I didn't have anyone to miss and I didn't have anything to lose. 
Oh, sounds like we have something in common. I like it here very much. Ian, your turn. Yeah, being a misfit is kind of nice. <laughs> well, uh, try not to bother you, I guess. So Ian is asking the big question of uh, setting up shop on the planet, or was that uh, Lucas? Or was that both of I think, I think both of us had the same idea. All right, but so I will uh, let Ian align his thoughts first. Well, I was going to say both of you can roll a persuasion or one can roll with advantage. Uh, I'm going to give, give the persuasion to the captain. Alrighty, with advantage. Okay. Wait, I have a plus five for persuasion. Same. Ah, well, I also gave a pretty good speech. Was it good? I don't know. I wasn't going to try to persuade. Okay. What were you going to do, uh, Ian? I was just going to point out that they don't seem to be dwelling on the surface anyway. Hmm. I was going to persuade, like, hey, you're just trying to survive. We're just trying to survive. We're both done with the other outside world. But what if we just all hang out? I mean, we're not trying to argue. We're just we're here for the same reason. We're not going to bother you. Well, anyways, um, back to my persuasion. So what I would say is... um. <clears throat> So, seeing as how my uh, my friend here, the robot guy, pointed out, uh, you have left the surface of this rock fairly unoccupied. Would it inconvenience you terribly if we took residence out there, left you guys alone in here, and maybe, I don't know, kind of struck up some sort of, like, trade deal or mutual understanding because fresh water is a very important commodity and um we would greatly appreciate you allowing us to use that in return for if there's anything you miss from home you know any of the human luxuries and stuff that you don't have inside of this you know place then um i think we'd be more than happy to find you a few things on our next trip it also go a long way to keeping you hidden. I could yes. make you something. I second that motion. Uh, Captain Anna. She kind of looks at you and goes, "Uh, if you could get me some lambus bread, as elves really knew how to cook." Ooh, ooh, we we have a cook. Yes, and I asked her to pick up some ingredients to make that exact thing. Um, how about, it, Captain, if you don't mind, um, uh -huh. how about... Where's my phone? Where's my phone at? Okay, I'm, I'm just gonna... Um, if it's alright, how about we get the cookie to make you some bread, and... You allow us to maybe use a little bit of the mossy area at the entrance of the cave to grow things. And then we can keep making bread and stuff. Also, you're pretty. And then Clangy comes up and nuzzles her. Okay, uh, she says, Is it, uh, good, good, kitty, go away. <coughs> She's a little Mikey, rough. Leave the, leave the poor woman alone. She, she might have an allergy. But I'm hairless. <laughs> <laughs> I just don't like cats. There actually is a fair point. <laughs> it is a very fair point. Um, so uh, she says, I mean, this asteroid is inhabitable now anyway. There's no changing that. Uh, these things don't just stop because if you want them to. Uh, you. Yeah, you by the way, did the insects come with the asteroid or with you? Oh, with me. Uh, they rescued me, actually. They're oh, not from... Uh, they're not from the Solar Empire. Oh, me. Uh. Hmm. 
So my crew, uh, we were tasked with the most ambitious of the uh, Prime's goal to not only seek out new worlds, but also terraform one, make a new base, and expand uh, the human influence beyond the inner planets. We got as far as the nearest gas giant, just outside of the asteroid belt. Uh, when strange things attacked our ship, uh, after having fought through the Grimlocks, we got to... Uh, this music is really not appropriate. <laughs> I don't know, it's kind of a bop, you know? It is. I was really enjoying it. I'm like... Okay. Aw, you've ruined it. <laughs> <laughs> it was so unfitting, but it was like, I was fighting. So, um... We escaped past the asteroid belt. Um, strange things assaulted our ship. We made it past the Grimlocks. Um, there are beings out beyond the asteroid field that you would not even recognize. Uh, our ship collided with something. It split in half. Uh, the half with the Spelljammer helm veered off. I didn't see where it went. Uh, luckily, I was on the half that had this uh, terraforming equipment. Uh, one item that each leads to an elemental plane and allows it to leak out so that wherever we go, we can produce air and fire and earth and water. Um, <clears throat> the Thrykreen were seeking to escape something that lived deep within the moon of the gas giant uh, but they had no way of escaping until they made their way to my ship through sheer luck we veered back to the asteroid belt and landed here on this one the rest of your crew must still be out there though right presumably somewhere if whatever got into the ship and tore it apart didn't also tear them apart um well, we're, we're going to be building uh, a home outside. Um, we could have them make an extra room if you so or, do, if you wanted to join us. Or if this is an acceptable compromise, we could build our base in here. Tell you what, hang on. So I'm. Intrigued by the story. I think there needs to be justice done. I didn't sign up for this pirate thing because I wanted to just, you know, not do anything for the rest of my life, no offense. Um, you guys want to play... play house? I'd say we go for an adventure. Wait, wait, I mean, that's just my opinion. I'm, I'm one man. I'm not exactly the best member of the crew, but, uh, you know. If, if, if it's alright with the captain, you could join us and we could find your crew and maybe you could help us develop this asteroid hmm. you know, you and we can take all... down the empire even maybe I mean that's just you know big goals someday you know yeah, I'm just gonna stop, stop you're, right there. you're all weird I like that <laughs> and I you just came to me Thank you. I like money, and discoveries means information other people don't have. And information sells value. Well, that information money. doesn't digest you. You're on. <laughs> so, whatever unknown threats are out there that split your ship in half and probably decimated the rest of your crew, my condolences. Um. <clears throat> I think the rest of the solar system would probably like to know about it before, just in case it's a threat that could one day affect them. So what say we go on a mission together to A, rid the solar system of this threat, and B, 
Yeah, people pay us to tell them about it. Oh, oh, and might I add, I, I, I'm aware you really don't care about the rest of the solar system at all, so there's not really a reason for you to care, Captain. But, uh, you know, what about the fact that you're killing the thing that maybe is kill, possibly killing you and your comrades? You know, you make that, you get rid of the bigger guy, you're just suddenly the biggest guy. The rest of the solar system is never going to fuck with you. What do you say? We could get the fame, the glory, the money. We could have it all. Power! We have a hard time with a handful of orcs, and you want to go chasing the Snorlax and shit. Hey. She says, I... One step at a time, Robocop. We'll take, we'll, we'll take small steps. You know, first, I think we should definitely, you know, stay here, recuperate a little bit, maybe build a base, and, uh, you know, work things out. I welcome you to the asteroid. Uh, Whoa! The Thrike Green will, the Thrike Green will uh, accept you as one of us. Uh, it'd be nice to have some food that isn't um, just moss. Okay, so how about, <laughs> Captain, we get the orcs to move everything into the asteroid, and then we can start, you know, sowing some crops. Yes, but would it be acceptable if we built our base inside as it would offer us more protection and less detectability from the outside, therefore making it less likely that our presence would draw eyes towards you, as well as the fact that if we were inside, we would be closer to you and be able to help you stay protected as well? Yes, Seems like a win-win to me. We, that would be could, acceptable. We, we could help with defense. Um... My, my dragon blows fire and it talks so if you ever want to have a conversation with someone you can talk with it oh I think I've had enough conversation to do me bit. for I've had enough conversation to do me for a little while now um. <laughs> you were probably missing it though ain't we wait yeah no okay Clangy just I know I would. back to uh, TD Question. What are we going to do with the ship? Hmm. What are you going to do with the ship? Um. Well, now we've got one and a half ships. Uh, well, well, the half ship doesn't matter. I think that's staying in place. Um, I think what he's talking about is if we're building the base inside to help lower detection chances, and we still have a ship that's docked outside, like on the surface of the asteroid, you know, it... it and of a sitting duck. Yeah, yeah. alright, alright, alright. Uh, possibly, you got any more juice in the, the big old terraforming thing? Oh, it just automatically does it. Uh, oh, oh, you wanna you wanna make a big enough cavity for this uh, old vessel? We could uh, possibly hide it in here for... Uh, and you could always people. enter through that way, and she points sort of the opposite way of uh, where you guys actually came in. And there is a hole large enough for her ship to have come in, which is about three times bigger than yours. Why well, didn't you say you had a hair? Like ten times bigger than yours. <laughs> All right, then we shall dock our ship there. That seems like a marvelous plan. <laughs> you didn't even mention we had you had a hair. Oh dear, it's just like walking away, shaking his head. So you guys are going to tell the orcs to build uh, down in the cave now? Yes. It's like, boys, we're moving inward. Inland. And the Thrykreen uh, accompany you. They inform you that there are actually many, many entrances, and they all go to this uh, place. The asteroid is, in fact, completely hollow. Oh. And there are lots of interconnected cave systems that go throughout it from the surface to the middle and then out the other side. Very insectoid. Mm -hmm. Nice. Definitely will get lost. And uh, so, having established a base, you guys will all level up to level four. Yeah. We've also made several allies. Um, and I guess that's a good enough place as any to end the session. 
I'm satisfied with that. I like what yeah, we're, I mean, with a stopping point rather than, you know, continuing further, maybe getting into a battle and, like, just starting it. Yeah. Um, yeah. And we now have a, a base and an old, crazy magic woman and ant friends or something. Yep. By the way, uh, she would have introduced herself to you all as uh, Mag the Castaway. Mag the Castaway. All right. Awesome. Yeah.